Good morning, West USA. Welcome to another edition of our Monday morning webinar, where I don't have a keyboard. It's, it's, it's right behind your computer there, Nick. Oh, man. Every day, it's like our first time ever doing this. Is what I love about it. But we appreciate everybody joining us today. We've got a lot of great uh, stuff for you today. So we'll take a look at what we're going to talk about. Of course, Todd Menard's here to give us the numbers. He's also going to give us the month end numbers. Uh, we got Matt Baker with the Bookspan Baker team going to give us our mortgage minute. And I'm just going to talk about we got a. It's a crazy market. How to control your buyers. Nice. Uh, and then in like Flynn, Keith Flynn's going to stop by for with seven social media tips for pros. So with that, as always, if you got any comments or questions, please feel free to email us at webinar at westusa.com. All right, Nick, let's get into a few announcements. We've got coming up today, 1030. If you've never attended our corporate orientation, we highly, highly encourage you to do so. You're going to get a lot of great information, some of our tools, technologies. So that is coming up this morning. Uh, if you haven't gotten signed up, it's not too late. You could just go on the dashboard and do so. It's at 1030 to 12. We're going to be doing it in person and on Zoom. So uh, either one you want to do, get signed up for it. Uh, React is kicking back up tomorrow. Um, great, Another great opportunity, especially for those of you that are new or hired within the last uh, two years, three years during the whole COVID thing when we haven't been able to do React. Um, you got all that. We got all the things that we're going to cover on uh, during React on the screen. So get signed up for that as well. Um, good chance to just really learn about uh, our technology and, and programs. Uh, Todd is back. So we're going to be doing another CE yeah. class uh, in person. No, it's uh, is it in person. Yeah, I uh, know it's going to be virtual. <clears throat> Uh, virtual this yeah. Wednesday, April 7th from 9 yeah. to 12. So your opportunity to get three hours of contract law. So again, as always, all of our events are on the dashboard so you can get signed up. Yeah, I'm just going to urge everybody to check online. I'm not sure that's the right, that's the correct name of the class, but it, uh, so check online on the westusacalendar.com. Either way, you're getting CE hours. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> All right. And Dean Becker is doing a CE class this Thursday in person, mastering the AAR listing contract. So another opportunity to get three hours of contract law. That's going to be held at the Chandler office. And then, as always, every Monday afternoon at 2 o'clock, uh, Bob Stevens has his own webinar called Don't Do That. So that's coming up this, or this afternoon at 2 o'clock. And if you... Didn't really get the hint. All of these events can be found on the dashboard on the calendar. All right, Todd, what is going on in the market? Awesome. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Today, we're going over the market statistics for the week ending April 4th and also looking into the month end numbers for March 2022. Let's go. 31 days closed on market this past week, a 0.59 month supply. We're sitting at 170% absorption. Uh, average list prices are... 820,000 uh, average sale price is at 573 and our list price to sale price retention is at 101.37 taking a look at active inventory active inventory is at 5941 pending at 4914 and closed units for the month of March we'll talk about that in just a little bit 10141 um, looking at our new listings taken 2206 that's a good number, that's a great it, number. yeah it's starting to, it's up 5 almost 6% Closer to that 2,400, uh, 72 days on market for active inventory and 31 days on market for close. Price range is under 500,000. Uh, this was, remember, it was as high as 53, almost 54%. We're back down to 51. Our $500 million category at 34%. So it picked up in that segment right there. And an additional 2% uh, inventory picked up in the million dollar plus homes. And I think that's, we're going to continue to see that particular million dollar and up, obviously. Uh, continue to grow. So looking at the spreadsheet again, middle column, uh, 2019 SW is the same week, two years, uh, three years ago now in 2019, the, the last pre-COVID year there was. 2021 last year SW and then the two weeks over week to the left. So getting right into it, 2206, that's good up from 2090. If you look in the uh, 2021, you'll see it was 2157. So we took more listings and we have been doing that, taking more listings than we did last year. So it if anybody's saying sellers aren't really trying to sell their homes, they're not engaging, they don't know where they're going to go. Yeah, that might all be true, but you've got more listings entering the market than you did. In fact, look at that. Third, 2200, way over the right in Goldenrod, 2238 in 2019. We're, we're keeping pace with 2019 now, which is even 
uh, bigger numbers. Uh, active inventory, 5941. Uh, so that was going up. You can see it in coming soon at 831. You can see it in the single family detached at 4800. Uh, new homes, 535. Every category, non-distressed. Every category is up except the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, what are we talking about here? <laughs> the uh, distressed inventory. Thank you, everybody. Um, and then we go into pending. Pending, we always use this as, you know, are people really engaging in the marketplace? Uh, what's that look like? And in comparison, 4,900 uh, people are in active uh, escrow right now at this particular moment. We were as high as 5,100 the week before. 5,880 and 5,679, those numbers are pr pr pretty close. Um, so I think, you know, when we see those, we're off just a little bit, hence the red ticker. We could use a few more people in the market is basically, that's what that's saying. We're going to skip uh, closed right now and go right down to the stats. So a half a percent, uh, you know, 0.5, almost 0.6 percent uh, inventory, as you can see. That's better than it was in 2021. Uh, obviously not so good in 2019. Uh, sale prices, you know, obviously they're up, they're down, they're up, they're down. Depends on the reporting period. Uh, but again, it's uh, new homes. Uh, the Average list prices are at 820. The average sale price is at 573. Market's still pretty brisk, but it's pretty consistent. So we've been averaging right about 73 to 76 days on market uh, for the entire inventory. 31 to you know 28 to 31 on the uh, closed inventory. And again, list price to sale price retention. Are the sellers giving away any money? Uh, no, <laughs> in this particular situation, at least not as far as uh, as discounts are concerned. Maybe you're picking it up in concessions or negotiations through escrow. Uh, you know the inspection period, but not on the sale price, 101.73 green only because it came down just a little bit. So let's look at 22 uh, March on the right hand side. You got two blue columns. The first column to the left is the March current period reporting. And then to the right is the month prior to that. And taking a look in comparison, 10,730 listings were taken last month. You know what? We're over 10,000. That's huge. Uh, we had 11,112 a uh, year before. And uh, taking a look at the active inventory, 8,100 versus 7,200 last year. We've got 1,000, almost 900 more listings in the marketplace right now than we did a year ago. 7,144 active uh, was the active pending uh, at any point in time during last month in comparison to 10. 1,479 people in the marketplace in escrow last year. This is why this is green because that 10,400 was way too many people uh, in escrow at any one time. That was certainly the height of what was going on. Uh, taking a look at closed production, 10,141 for the month, uh, 10,400 last year. We were so close, but take your eyes to the right and look at how close we were in February. We were again, 0.4 difference, almost the same. Um, you know, there's going to be a couple of days of, of clearing up these numbers. This is, you know, I'm reporting today being the fourth, which is pretty quick on these. Uh, I don't think it, we're going to see a big change. And of course, if we do, I'll let you know. Uh, obviously, as far as closings for distressed inventory, you know, it's there, but it still represents about 0.3% of the entire 0.3 of 1%, 30% of 1% uh, of the entire MLS inventory. Uh, we finished the month at, at 0.8, almost 0.9%. Uh, of, uh, excuse me, a 0.8 month supply, not percent, uh, 89% uh, inventory absorption. That was actually very stable. Um, so March turned out to be a, a killer month for us all. Uh, 834 is the average uh, list price. 574 was the average uh, purchase price. Uh, the Average days on market, again, you know, this isn't really changing, but look at that, 18 days. The market was exceptionally brisk last month, uh, and 101.8 versus 102, that means the sellers, even though they're not giving away any money, buyers now are not offering as much money. Um, so we're not pushing the properties that much higher uh, than the actual value, uh, comparable value at this particular point. That's really a good sign, a little comforting to know that the market isn't going really crazy. Uh, but again, we'll see uh, and continue to report on that, see how it pans out. These are the different ways you can reach us. You can see us on all these different uh, uh, channels. And uh, if you need any assistance or you'd like to have any clarification on any of the numbers, please don't hesitate to give me an email. All right. All right. Appreciate it as always. All right. We're going to bring Matt Baker in for the books fan Baker. Let's go. Difference. What's what's happening? What's going on? We got rates are rates are up, I guess. That's the way to say it. Um, you know, the Fed is, you know, I, the Fed made the first rate you know, sort of decision in over a couple of years, right? And and that was just in March. 
And one of the things they talked about was talking about six, seven, maybe eight more hikes. So if you really think about it, that's somewhere between one and a half and two and a half more rate increases. Now, again, the Fed doesn't all doesn't mirror mortgage rates, but if you think, well, if there's one and a half to two and a half potential rate increase, how much further can interest rates go? And yes, they've already climbed in anticipation of some of that, but that's why when the Fed made the announcement last month, the rates didn't go down, right? Because if they were like, oh, we're only going to do one or two more rate hikes, maybe rates would have come off a little bit, but they didn't, and they're going to continue to go. I read that um, that CNBC was talking about um, – uh, there, you know, the, the four nine five was kind of the average rate right now, and so that means there's a that means there's some people getting rates in the fives, and there's, there's some people getting rates in the fours. But yet, average, you're, you're darn near close to five. And so, the real number going forward is that. And I made a comment, you know, I don't know, six months ago, that said I think rates will go to five before they go back to three, and this is sort of coming true, right? You're going to see rates continue to go up. Um, you know, who knows how far it goes, but just know, be prepared that the clients are assuming this, right? They, they, they feel the inflation in their life. They feel other things. So the fact that rates are going up is not a surprise for most people that I talk to, because I, I think that's a big fear, yeah. right? Is that, oh my gosh, rates are going to go up. I'm priced out. Well, we're, we're talking about it now and I think it's, it's helping. All right. Well, let's talk about the thing I, I wanted to talk about and that's fairway cash guaranteed, which is a new thing Fairway is doing, which essentially is if a, a, um, a guaranteed close. So if you get a Fairway pre, pre-approval, so this means that when Fairway actually pre-approves the loan, so we'll do a full underwrite ahead of time, you can submit with your offer. And we've, I've got a sample here of, of a Fairway guaranteed cash offer addendum. That essentially says, <laughs> go to the next slide. We'll buy. We'll 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 guarantee the closing. We'll guarantee it closes on time. And if it doesn't, Fairway will either purchase the home at the appraised value, which I got a lot of laughs at to to some degree, because what seller is selling their house at appraised value in today's right. market? But the other side of it was you get ten grand cash. So you either get ten grand cash as a seller, or you can sell it. Fairway will buy it at the appraised value. And that is that is only and it comes with this fairway cash guarantee offer addendum. It's only for FHA, VA and conventional. They've actually changed that USDA is no longer allowed. But you've got FHA, VA and conventional. And it requires us to do what we call a to be determined approval. So that means we don't just pre-qual it. We get the full file, submit it to fairway and they underwrite the loan. And then we can submit this or, or issue this fairway cash guarantee offer that can go with your buyer buyers to be competitive. So it's really a way to say, hey, this is better than cash. We're, you know, essentially we're we're as good as cash. We're guaranteeing that this thing's going to close when you when you get the close of escrow signed and you get the contract signed, we're willing to take it that next step further. So um again, it's not for for everyone per se, but I don't know why you wouldn't, right? It's just it's more time for us to go and and get it and you have to be prepared and I had a good question from somebody else. It's about a week to 10 days to get a full to be determined underwritten approval because you have to go through the disclosure process you got to get the file ready for underwriting and so forth so it does take a little extra time well, and then also if if you go through that process and now your buyer is ready to go you guys are going to be able to we're going to be able to offer a sh- even a shorter e- even a shorter period, escrow, because every, right. you guys got everything and we're not putting a limitation on the escrow period we, you know we're not saying oh you have to write a 21 or 30 day contract or whatever we're saying if you agree to, to a close of escrow day and we have this thing to be determined approved we'll close when you want to close and if we don't we'll put our money where our mouth is so th- it's a it's a little different um, approach a little different perspective but again take advantage of it. Yeah. Like, you know, get, get your clients over. Let's get them pre-approved. If they're walking in to this market with yeah. a big box bank prequal, I mean, you know, good luck. good luck. And so it's a really easy question, a really easy transition to let's get you to fairway. They got this option here that's going to help us win more. And the biggest, you know, opportunity for us right now, or the biggest, I think, downside risk is buyer fatigue. 
and I'm getting it. I'm hearing it. You know, they write two, three, four, ten yeah. offers, and well, they're not gonna, winning. We're going to talk about that today during right. the three well, pack. Go. But yeah, uh, good stuff. So that is the books, Ben Baker team. That different. is the difference. So yeah. if you got to know more, give them a call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Matt. Appreciate it as always. Everybody should know how to get a hold of Matt by now. Um, so, so if you got any <laughs> questions, um, it's it's well worth at the very least picking up the phone, giving Matt a call, and learning more about the program. So yep, you bet. Uh, appreciate that. All right. So Thanks, we're going to talk about buyers. Um, Obviously, Todd, market is crazy. Matt um, alluded to the fact that, you know, we're experiencing buyer's fatigue. And so I think for me, I have I've on my own personal business really have had to switch gears and and really think about how do we control our buyers? The market is different than any other time that I can uh, uh, that I can recall, um, especially with inventory. So we'll just jump right into it. Obviously, the climate for buyers has changed. We are at a point um, where we have to be firm with our buyers. They are looking to us for guidance and we have to take control of them. We have to, as agents, understand we are no longer order takers. Okay, There's no, hey, I want this, I want this, I want this, and, and, and so forth. Buyers cannot be picky in this market, and you have to sit down with your clients and explain that. When an opportunity jumps up, you got to jump on it. You don't have time to wait. Oh, I want to take the weekend to think about it. You know, maybe something else is going to pop up that's going to have, you know, a walk-in pantry or whatever. We're not in that market anymore. And we have to be able to explain that to our clients. Um, we have to be able to, to clearly articulate why homes are selling fast. And we're going to get into a lot of it. You, you know, for my buyers, I'm sitting down saying, listen, you just, we don't have time to wait. Homes are flying. This house is going to pop up on the market. You don't have time. You don't have time to wait. If it says coming soon, we're going to try to get in there and make an offer before that home goes live. And again, you don't have you, we just don't have the we don't have the freedom to be uh, picky. You have to set the tone of urgency. That's where we're at. You know, buyers, you know, last time I bought a home, I did this and I did this and I did this. OK, we are we we are. We are in a urgent market and you have to set that tone and establish the fact of urgency. Um, and you have to explain to them, this is simply how things are. Yeah. This is just the way it is. Do you want a home or not? If you don't want a home, we're going to get into why that's a mistake. But do you want a home or not? And if you want a home, you got to move fast. And we got to take, we got to set that tone and be firm with our buyers. Yeah, and 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 being, you know, being picky or settling, as some people say. Yeah, I had to settle for this. I wanted more. You know, you have to think about the fact that right now in this particular market, getting into the game is what's important. Is closing on a deal because at least now you're you're insulating yourself from you know your property, even though it might not be the perfect of all properties for you, you know, that's going to be appreciating just as quickly as, as other properties in the marketplace. And so as a result, over time, you may be able to find, but you've now got the comfort and you've also now got the insulation in the market, the inflation protection, because you're at least in that, in that game. And, and the other piece, Mike, is, is just because you're talking about, you know, having to have these, these conversations. There's a book out there. It's called Fierce Conversations. I can't think of the name, Susan, I can't think of her last name right now, but it deals with with having to have a sincere, you know, heart to heart conversation with your people. And it's difficult uh, when you do look that up, even if you look it up online, look at the beach ball uh, conversation. And that's really what you want to kind of look at. But uh, Michael Mayer also helps you set expectations, but you got to be firm. Yeah. Number two, you have to know and be able to explain the factors impacting our market. You got to know what's on people's minds. Okay. There are there is low inventory. That's the conversation I have with my buyers. I go, well, why, why is the market the way it is? Why do I have to settle? Whatever the case is, because there are no homes. OK, we have a low inventory. And for me, there is no end in sight. Uh, I focus. So, you know, I know you give all the numbers. So when I'm talking, I, I deliver even worse news. Um, but what I am when I am looking at numbers and I'm looking at available properties, I'm simply looking at active single family detached homes in Maricopa uh, County, because that's where most of my, you know, because the MLS includes homes up in Prescott, you know, all over Arizona. So as of this morning uh, on the MLS, there were three thousand fifty active single family detached homes in Maricopa County. So going back to point one. And this includes multi-million dollar homes. 
Okay, um, there is not a lot of inventory out there, and this is this is why, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, we are so urgent on this because they're just not inventory. Uh, we you know we need to talk about rising rates and and a looming recession. I'm not saying we're headed towards a recession, but it's looking like we're heading to a recession. Conversation I'm having with them because they're like, well, uh, you know, with, with the rates. To your point, get into the game. Well, I don't want to pay now four and a half five percent. Doesn't matter. Okay, get in the game. Doesn't matter what your rate is if you're going to make money and you have a place to to, to live in. Um, and is there a looming recession? For me, I'm not an economist, but rates got up to seven percent and we hit a recession. I don't think it's going to impact the the real estate market that much because we just don't have inventory into you know we talked last week we we probably need around 25,000 active homes exactly to, to, to have a balanced right. market and then the other thing that I've got my eye out on and, and the conversation I'm having with my buyers is um, of all the things to be concerned with and I'm not saying I'm overly concerned but we have to start having you know adult conversations yeah. about these hedge funds these hedge funds are coming in and buying tens of thousands of homes every year they're paying cash they're overpaying they mm -hmm. don't care if they overpay because they know that home prices are going to continue to go up they're turning these into long term rentals so if i pay if they pay $30,000 over a what it would appraise at what does it matter to them in 10 years they're going to make that back and they're turning all these homes into rental properties that's my concern with the market yeah yeah no that that is the concern uh you know companies like Blackstone Financial Group yep. and other companies that are buying thousands of homes of here a year. Uh, you know, th this is a concern for you and I as realtors. But uh, going back, just to be able to explain the factors involved, sure, we give you the numbers, but here's the thing. When you're talking about rising rates, don't just scare people. Don't go into sensationalism. Don't because you could scare people right out of the market too. In essence, show them what happens to a payment if it goes up a half or one percent what would the same property that they're interested in buying today be what would it cost them if the interest rate went up one percent so that way they can actually feel for themselves what the difference is you're not sensationalizing just chicken little is falling by now because because really people that's pressure that's the wrong kind of pressure that's not setting expectations yep. that's trying to force people you know the round peg in the square hole but uh, again looming recession there is you know we're to, they're talking about it being accelerated to 23 24 now 19 uh, 2020, 19, 2020 uh, 3 2024 uh, but again the uh, all of the economists are saying that they're not anticipating you know prices of homes are going to maintain they're not going to drop you know any of those types of things so it's not not like, well, if I hold out till the recession, I'll be able to buy low. No, you won't. That's not what this recession is going to supposedly, based on the economist's yeah. projections, be. And going back to the hedge funds, you know, I, I like to look at what investors are doing because they tend to be a little smarter than I am. And they have access to a lot more data. They study yeah. data. Yep. And if they're buying uh, with that anticipation long term that they're going to make a ton of money on this on these homes, Mr. <coughs> Seller, let's just let's follow the money. Because this is where the money's going. We always say follow the money, right? Third is battling buyer fatigue. Waiting is not an option. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, low inventory will keep the market strong and moving. So it doesn't matter for me, doesn't matter how many times we fail, how many offers that we've got to make, you've got to get in the game. I'm going to be with you. If it takes 15 to 20 offers, we'll eventually get something. As long as you're not too picky, um, we will, you, you've got to stay in the game. And I was reading something. They're anticipating that rental rates uh, by the end of this year will have gone up 20%. So... Uh, so this is how we're going to overcome buyer fatigue. It doesn't matter. You have to stay in the game. And again, you cannot be picky. So I was thinking about this. Uh, when I go see my doctor, he doesn't sugarcoat anything, right? He's to the point. Like, if, like, hey, you want to live longer? You want to be healthy? This is what you got to do. There's not a Your lot choice. of there's not a lot of pleasantries with uh, with <laughs> with my doctor. Um, and so for us. And, and I'm not saying, you know, not have pleasantries, but what I'm saying is we are their doctor. We are their, we're going to help them get into a home. And so 
we have to going back to point number one, we have to control them. We have to control the emotions yeah. and, and we've got to just, cause they are leaning on us. We have to, and I always say to all my buyers, we've got, we've got to remove emotion. This is not about remote emotion. This is about dollars and cents. You know, and that's so true. I mean, I, I, to my earlier point without going overboard, uh, don't scare your clients, prepare your clients, you know, put them in a situation where they make a better decision based on the information you're providing them, you know, because if we try to change their mind, we're a pushy agent and they're not going to refer us maybe down the road. But if we, if we actually consult them and lead them to making a better decision, you know, that that's really what this is all about. And Mike does a great job of putting these, you know, I mean, how do you, how do you really you know, control a buyer in three steps. But these three steps are exactly what we need to do to be able to position ourselves where we're the industry expert. And if we say things like, oh my gosh, you know, we have no inventory. Well, actually we have a lot of inventory. The problem is we have a lot more buyers than we've ever had. And so the buyers are now, because the population is exploding, uh, obviously from California, but other places as well. And, and we're just consuming this inventory faster than we can put it into the, you know, we can take new listings. That's really what's happening in the marketplace. But if you say, oh my God, we have nothing. And, uh, it's almost over. You're going to have to settle it. We have to be careful of the words we use. It, it may be true, but we've got to find the buyer's value proposition. You know, why is waiting not good for me? I don't want to force you into buying today. I want to tell you why waiting isn't good and let you come to the decision all by yourself. Yeah. And so, and I'll just end with this. So my line that I have with all my clients, especially battling buyer fatigue, at the end of the day, I got to ask you a question, Mr. And Mrs. Buyer, do you like money? Hmm. The answer is yes. We got to stay in the game, and we got to battle this. Do you like giving your way, giving away all your money? Do you like investing in other people's retirement accounts? Nope. We got to stay in the game because as rental rates increase, you're, all you're doing is investing more and more money into somebody else's uh, retirement Excellent. account. So, Excellent. all right, Todd, appreciate it as yeah, always. Man. That is our three pack. All right, we're gonna bring in Keith Flynn, our digital Flynn marketing Flynn. expert. <laughs> Uh, we're going to talk about three social media tips real estate pros should know. I haven't looked at these, but I'm going to assume I probably know one. Yes, and I'm on every one of the slides. So it's, uh, it's, I've been helping with my low self-esteem lately. Thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> no, these are, these, there's no real secret sauce here, guys, we're going to go through. But um, what we are going to cover is just anchoring in some of the basics and some of the most things, you know, for agents to focus on as you're continuing – your quest to uh, achieve social media dominance and get your word out there. Uh, number one for you, there's going to be a three-parter here. It's the, basically the three main social media platforms you guys should be on. Number one, Facebook for sure. Still the largest uh, um, visited and heavily utilized social media platform. So definitely advantageous for you guys as marketers to be on there or as agents, excuse me. <clears throat> of course, um, most important for you guys, whether you're starting out as an agent or you're or a seasoned agent, um, you need to maintain a social presence, and especially in today's age with COVID and minimizing contact, it's still happening. Um, you know, there's been a significant uptick, not only for real estate agents to use social media, but also consumers. Um, I, you know, mom, dad, grandma, the kids, everyone's on social media, um, staying connected, not traveling as much as they once were. And so great opportunity for you guys to be on there. Um, your Facebook algorithm favors posts that get a lot of engagement. So the big question for the, or the big thing for you guys is to focus on questions that get people to raise their hands and engage you in conversation, not only to build a relationship, but also to game the algorithm. Because when Facebook sees engagement and conversations happening, it values or now uh, gives your uh, content high value and will start to cast out your content organically to other people who may not have seen your content before, and especially to those who still follow your page. It is a pay to play model. So Facebook wants you to spend money for your content to be seen, to get more eyeballs on there. And so things, these are things you guys can do without having to spend money. And one of the most important ones is pushing out content about your local community. And that's going to get people to, to ask questions. Do, do likes count as engagement? Likes don't really hold any weight anymore. Um, it, you know, there, it's there for the fly by person who's just, you know, lurking and then scrolls on. What we really want to do is get emotive, the, you know, besides the like, um, as you move, if you, you know, you hover on the like button, you get the other emotional options, anger, smiling. Wow. Those have, you know, they'll, they'll, they're plus ones. If you get someone to move to the right and use one of the emotions, but really what we want to do is get people to comment and share. And, and we'll get into it here in a minute. 
save your content. If you're posting evergreen content, if they save that to reference back later, that's a huge plus uh, and the algorithm will love you for that. Um, number uh, point uh, two, or the second one on here, Facebook or Instagram guys, Instagram is a huge one and it's a big play for you folks who are targeting millennials. Um, <clears throat> it's obviously be qu quickly becoming uh, this, it is the second largest and it's getting up there in speed uh, or in height with the use of social media. Um, every post you will need on Instagram needs to be highly visual. You guys are in a visual industry, so this is a natural fit. And so it's obviously a great opportunity for you to take photos of your interiors of your homes and features that are going to help you showcase the house and not only the house, but the community. Um, get into your hyper niche local communities and showcase great things about it. Use your smartphone. Uh, everyone's got a great camera now. If you have it within the budget, grab it a, a, a digital camera. There's some great uh, cost effective ones out there on the market to help you curate uh, really high res, awesome photography. Um, when it comes to your Instagram, um, you're going to obviously utilize visual compelling posts, but then also again, comments, likes, and engaging, same as Facebook. We want to see people engaging in conversations. That's, that's going to really help you guys out. And especially with Instagram too, um, um, a lot of the millennials that use the platform want to feel connected to the brand before they decide to either purchase or use the service. That's just a, a, just a, a fundamental different way of the way they approach it now. They're not susceptible to traditional forms of advertising like print media, radio spots, commercials. Um, you know, most of them aren't even looking at the road when they drive anyway. So billboards aren't going to have much of an effect. So <laughs> um, LinkedIn <clears throat> and we're losing my voice again. All right. LinkedIn um, is another big play for you guys. Certainly an awesome opportunity for commercial real estate to get in there and connect with C-level business decision makers, investments, um, uh, you know, anybody who you come into contact with uh, during the purchase of the process of the sale of the home. Find out if they're on LinkedIn. You'll get to know, you know, you'll, you're obviously going to ask them what line of work you're doing. What business are, are you uh, affiliated with? Do you have a business? Go to LinkedIn and connect with them because it's strictly for um, business related content. And an awesome opportunity for you to uh, uh, post any of your accolades, any achievements, any awards that you may have uh, um, uh, uh, received. We have our awards coming up um, in the next few weeks. And so anybody who's a recipient of, um, you know, a sort of certificate or an award that they received in the past year for their sales and volume, get into LinkedIn and put that in there. That's social proof. People are going to see not only do you say you you are a, uh, a, a, um, a trusted agent, but now you have the proof to show it because you've received these accolades from your brokerage and then connect with other um, clients as well as uh, other agents and see what they're doing and putting out because it's always good to keep an eye on what your competition is. Well, I want to want to comment on a couple of these. So one yeah, of sure. the things with uh, LinkedIn that I, I primarily use LinkedIn for is for stocking purposes. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> you know, you, you know, when I'm looking up a, a new client or potential client on, on Facebook, right. Um, I'm going to get a lot of their, their personal stuff. Right. And, and it's important because I want to know who it is that I'm about to, to, to meet. But on the LinkedIn, it gives me the professional uh, side mm -hmm. of the people uh, where I really kind of get into knowing, um, you know, what do they do for work right. and what is their position at work? And then I can do other searches to see, you know, what's the average salary right. for somebody in this line of work and, and, and so forth. Um, because, that to me, their professional career is going to tell me a little bit more about what kind of buyer or what kind of seller they're going to be and how I'm going to you know, relate to them. And what are the, some of the things that I'm going to want to talk about with them? Right. And then the second aspect of the, the, the Facebook and the, and the Instagram, uh, I, I want to hit, hit home on the importance. There is a difference when you post, make a post and say, check me out you know, and you don't have any engagement. There's no, there's no question there. There's no invitation to comment there. So when you just have a check me out post, all you're pretty much doing is telling people just to like, yeah, you're just broadcasting. Yeah. Broadcasting yeah. as opposed to, and I, and I try and I, you know, and I do do it with every post, sure. but I try, I would say 70 to 75% of my posts. I spend time thinking about, okay, this is the picture I'm going to post, mm -hmm. even if it's a burger or whatever the case is. But I, I, I really strategically spend time going, okay, what is going to be that question that I'm going to ask so that people will want to comment. Exactly. And then to go back, if you comment, I'm going to try to go back and comment. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. If you get them to comment, you want to go back and then engage them in a conversation. It doesn't have to be a long drawn out thread, but at least engage the conversation, then take them into a direct message or a DM and then, or take it offline, pick up the phone and then get them into your CRM. And as Keith said, you're building a brand. So you don't want to just post about doing real estate. You want to talk about the other things in your lives. You don't have to get super public about your private lives, your kids and things like that. But if you're going out and doing something, you should take a picture of the hike that you're on or the restaurant you're eating dinner at. You want to be a human being to these people that are following you because that's what's going to get them to want to work with you. And also leverage your brokerage. I mean, even if you're not at West USA, brokerages carry weight behind them. So if you are a part of the West USA brokerage, we're about to announce our rankings for 2021. Those are pretty great. You can post those, especially on LinkedIn. People that are on LinkedIn are going to, as he said, accolades are going to be following that more. And that's going to have a better, bear, better bearing on <clears throat> what you are doing as a real estate agent at that brokerage. Yeah, that's a great point, Nick. Absolutely. LinkedIn's awesome for that because it does have at the bottom of your profile uh, for you to add awards, achievements, any nonprofits you may be associated with, um, any 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 uh, volunteer work you've done. So you're going to be able to go deeper into who you are as a person and a personal brand on LinkedIn and you can on some of the other social sites. Uh, number two, start with the start a two-way conversation. So we talked about this already on a few of the slides. 94% of millennial home buyers, that's your, fir your largest home time, first time home buyer, are taking to online for searching. Th th this is, well, they've grown up with a phone in their hand. This is what they know. They all go online right away. And so um, it, uh, being uh, constant in their face, promoting you uh, is not, it has very minimal appeal. It's not what they like to see. Um, so constantly hitting them over the head with just listed, just sold. We understand that there's a life cycle of posts that will come from a listing, whether, you know, uh, uh, under contract in escrow, you know, all along the way, those are great times for you to, you know, woo -hoo, champion yourself and have a good time about it. But we get it. Like you're an agent. That's fine if you're going to do that. But remember to start the conversation with other content. What are, hey, does anyone know of a great splash pad in the area? Even if you know which one's the great one, yeah. you can still pose the question and to get people to start the conversation. Um, and, and, and the great thing about that is the conversation is going to lead to building a relationship, whether you're doing it online or offline. You know, this is social prospecting as opposed to in-person prospecting. We're just utilizing this platform to build a relationship and ultimately get you connected with these potential clients in the future walk everyone through the process you know when you're in your uh showcase what uh is involved in the buying and selling process you can still share these stories with people even though they haven't been through it or you can showcase your education and your knowledge they're going to feel connected and bonded to you before they they know they have a need or if they know someone that does they're going to still feel that level of connection and trust with you as a real estate agent um, number three, <laughs> choose a platform wisely. Um, I know I get out of class and I have agents are like, I'm on LinkedIn, Snapchat, WeChat, UChat, you know, Facebook, Instagram. And they're like, how, wh when am I going to be an agent? You don't need to be everywhere for everyone. Reverse engineer your audience. If you want to target millennials, be on Instagram. If you want to go after 40 plusers, they're on uh, Facebook and Pinterest. If you want to connect with um, an aging demographic that's coming in now, TikTok is, a, it, you know, you're older, 29, 30, you're, you know, uh, they're, they were using TikTok and still are. Remember too, Instagram was where all the kids were five years ago, but now they're 33, 34, they're starting to buy. TikTok's, TikTok, I need a TikTok. TikTok's <laughs> going the right way right now where eventually it's going to be, in the, you know, kids were using it when they're 20s and still on it when they're in the 30s. And so eventually they're going to age into becoming a buyer. So it, it may be advantageous for you to start using TikTok now and get in there. You don't have to be the next, you know, dancer or singer. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do with these tools to showcase your property, your home, you and your neighborhoods. Um, yeah. So that's a big one for you guys choosing your platform wisely. So we we're just talking about this one when you're posting um, post consistently, not constantly. You don't need to post everything. If you get cut off, you don't need to take a photograph of the license plate and, and rant and rave. If you, you don't? Um, no, you don't. <laughs> but if you are, save that for Twitter. Right, yeah. save that one for Twitter. Um, when you're posting, um, um, and I know Todd like this, post with purpose, right? The most important thing you should be doing is writing down and getting your content on an editorial calendar. 
The calendar is going to adhere you to being constant so that you start to condition your audience to look for your content on certain days of the week. Monday is going to be a motivational or uh, a, a teaser for an open house later in the week. So Wednesday could be a neighborhood feature piece. Friday could be a personality piece. But get the calendar going because it's going to it's going to help you be, be consistent and scheduling your posts are going to be awesome for you because then you can go work your business, work your book, meet with clients while the social media is posting for you at a, at a scheduled time. Really, really smart one to do. And it's going to keep you insane, too, because waking up in the morning going, oh, I haven't posted anything in a week. What should I post? Now you're spending two hours wondering what to post and when you should be you know, banging the phones or you know, getting out there and meeting some clients. Um, did I post? Oh, yeah. So now part two of this real quick. There's usually three types of posts um, when it comes to posting your content on social media. Number one, time sensitive promotional. We've talked about this already. Yeah. Advertise your properties. You're going to want to tell your clients what you're doing. Uh, post your open houses. Get your brand uh, uh, out there in general. But number two, evergreen posts. These are really great ones that you guys can do as agents to fill in the time. Let's say you don't have a listing right now. You can still give the perception that you're working it and you're out there in the business. Um, start then educating your audience on what the process looks like. Content that's going to still be the same a year from now that it is today. Um, and pre-qualifying, uh, decluttering your house, curb appeal, things that you want to do before even calling a real estate agent and considering listing. These are going to be um, evergreen content that uh, it will educate your audience so that when the time comes, this is the kind of content they're going to want to save on social media. I'm not in the market to buy right now, but I'll wait until, you know, the rates go higher. No, um, you know, I'll wait until a year from now, but I'll earmark your contents because I'm going to need to do these things. And that's a great content that will also game the algorithm on Facebook and Instagram. And the last one, fun and entertaining. You guys are a personal brand, so there's no reason why you can't showcase yourself a little bit. Like Nick said, if you're, if you're a hiker, you're a biker, if you're into, you're, you're a foodie, uh, you love movies, chances are there's somebody else out there just like you who share these same common interests. And it's a great way to connect with them and build that rapport so that you are memorable the next time they know they have a need or they think of someone who does. Incorporate storytelling, guys. You guys know as real estate agents, you have stories about everybody because you're getting to know these people before they want to buy a house or as they're buying a house or they're looking. So um, every agent has great stories. Incorporate that into your social media content. You guys can utilize your clients to um, talk about some pain points or challenges that they had and how you as an agent help them overcome them. Talk about your neighborhood. Uh, you know, do some price comparisons. Talk about what's happening in the area. Local hyper niched market trends. Hey, 85085, this was the most expensive home sold last month. Here was the most inexpensive. Here's the medium, you know, and go through how many uh, homes are sold in the area. It's only going to help you showcase your expertise and be a, a trusted agent. Um, what they like to call the neighborhood mayor, right? I'm the, I know this neighborhood. I know the area. And by doing this through storytelling is an awesome way to build trust and rapport with your potential client. And number six, use great brand visuals. Um, I hate it. It drives me nuts when I see a foggy photo, you know, that dream sequence, you know, because the sweat was on the on the camera lens or the camera <laughs> or, um, you know, uh, 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 it's crooked or uh, bad lighting. Just really think about the visuals. You guys understand the importance of a first impression as a real estate agent. You need to have that same principle when it comes to you posting your content. Nobody wants to look at a, a, a really bad photo online. People will, people will scroll right past it, and, and, and then that'll tell the algorithm it's not a good post. Um, and then use carousel posts in your Instagram. Um, carousel posts are multiple photos in one post, up to 10. And what you're doing there is um, you're getting them to stop scrolling, or what we call thumb-stopping content. And now they're going to swipe left and go through all the photos, let's say, of a listing. The more time that someone spends on your content, the algorithm is watching how long they're spending and they're giving you credit for having high value content. So if I swipe past it once and I don't come back to it, it says this person, they're not interested, low value. If I stop and I read and I scroll and I swipe, then now it's high value. And so the algorithm is going to reward you kindly for that. Um, create collages, especially with your listings, guys. Another awesome opportunity to get people to stop and spend more time on your posts.
All right, last one. We're almost there. Good. All right, so most important, remember your past clients. It is unbelievable how many people, over 70% of people uh, said they could not remember the name of their agent. Yeah. It's wicked. and it, it really is. And there's an awesome opportunity for you guys as agents to still provide value to your past clients. You certainly should be friending them. You certainly should be directing them to your Facebook page, click uh, connecting on LinkedIn. Um, and then most importantly, um, push content out there to your past clients so that they stay aware of who you are and you stay top of mind with them. Um, uh, one thing that you can do every year to increase the value of your home, still providing value to your past clients, connect with a contractor or a landscaper um, and do some of those posts. These posts will also fill in for those times that you may not have a listing or you're a little bit slow right now or not able to help anybody. You'll still give the perception that you're an active agent and still have your thumb on the pulse of what's happening in the area. That's it. Well, okay. Yeah, I got a, so, so, so basically, this a lot uh, to wet digest. Our, this wet our appetite for wanting to come to your class. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and 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 that's the great thing about thank Jake uh, for the plug there. Appreciate it, Todd. Um, yeah, this Thursday uh, is our in-person React class. It's always good to come through again, guys. Social media is always changing. And so I stay aware of that. That's my role here at West USA. And it's important for me to make sure to keep this content in front of you guys, especially when there's major changes to platforms, because, um, you know, you want to you want to put your best foot forward. And so being aware of what's happening is important. So, so how often? Um, OK, I feel like there's so many times I hop on Facebook and mm -hmm. I'm like, like what just happened? Like, <clears throat> where where's this located now? Or why do I got to do this? I, I call you all the time. And I'm <laughs> like, I can't figure this out. I, I yep. did it last yep. week. And, and, and where so to forth. go? Where to go? So, so how often should we be, you know, really taking these yeah. these classes uh, to to just not only refresh right. ourselves, but to learn some of the the new things? I mean, I would say especially since we're back in person again, you know, maybe once every six months, maybe twice a year, at least once a year at the very minimum. I understand that everyone has busy lives and have things going on, but these are free classes for you guys. And, you know, and, and, and I'm, I, we have a good time, but we, it's also a very educational and very, I, I try to leave, have everyone leave with something new that they can do that they didn't know how to do before. You know, the biggest reason agents fail, Mike, and you and I have been through this for thir almost 30 years, is because they don't go to work. They don't they don't like the activities that are necessary to generate new business. And I get that because I was I am a realtor and I was a realtor in the <coughs> trench just like you guys for 20 something years. But I can tell you that uh, if you could spend a little bit, two hours in a class and pick up one new thing you didn't and then go again next month and pick up one more new thing and don't try to become a you know social media expert overnight. Just get used to doing one thing first and then the second thing and pay attention to what he's teaching as far as setting your schedule schedules and auto posting and things like that so that you're not burdened by all of those things. But, you know, if you are, if you don't have a vehicle right now, a, a channel where you have consumers calling you looking for houses, then you have nothing better to do than sit in, in one of these classes and learn how to generate something that sparks some interest in somebody you do know or don't know, and they'll reach out to you. Yeah. They just might buy a house from you. So yeah. I, I recognize um, that not everybody is naturally informative, entertaining, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even likable. It's hard being or, you and I, Mike. Or, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> but 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 for a lot of people, it's it's that creativity. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't know how to be creative on social media. Mm -hmm. Where you know, for me, I I pay very close attention uh, on. Well, I don't. I use two platforms. Um, I don't use all of them, um, but go. of what other agents are doing mm -hmm. or subscribe to other Facebook groups where you're, you're getting ideas. And, and, and we're not saying you don't copy people. They don't copy and paste and, and, and so forth. But there's a lot of fantastic ideas out there where where if you're not a naturally creative person, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to be because you you can get some ideas. Where are some of those places that we go yeah, to? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, first and foremost, before you can be – just like before you can be a good speaker, you need to be a good listener. So if you before you can be a good creator, which is most of us on, on social media, you need to be a good consumer. So go out there and consume other content from other agents. There's nothing wrong. It's an ethical life hack. To see what someone else is doing. <laughs> an ethical life hack. It's pretty good. An ethical life hack to see what someone else is doing 
and then replicate it, but make it your own. Like, you know, if, 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 if you find a trending song on Instagram for your reels or for TikTok, um, you don't need to learn the choreography and, and point and be the dancer. Take that trending song and do a collage of you hiking. Or you, if you're a foodie and you make a recipe, do a quick uh, multiple clips of you making a recipe of something that you like to share or holiday cookies or whatever the case may be. Um, there is a lot of opportunity for you out there. Just start consuming that content. And if you see something you like, you can hit the save button, save that to your social media folders, label your folders, uh, you know, whatever your categories are. are. And then you can go back and replicate that or reproduce it in your own way with your own overlays, your phone numbers, you in the video, uh, anyone else you need in the video. And then um, and then that's a great way to get going. Um, if you're in a closed group or if you're on Facebook, uh, Canva for real estate agents, really simple search. Canva for real estate agents is a closed group of over 30,000 other real estate agents who use Canva and share ideas nice. hey who's got a postcard for you know st patrick's day who's got a thank you letter uh who has a listing presentation that you might want to share and people are sharing their camera creations in there it's an awesome group they also teach classes so um it's all out there google it search for it um i, I love youtube there's nothing you can't learn on youtube I've, I've replaced the vanity i taught myself photoshop i mean like there's just so much you can do you just really have to have the aptitude and the attitude to do it I mean, I, I would say there's a lot to unpack when it comes to social media. You have to look at it like you're marketing your business. Mm -hmm. How else are you marketing your real estate business? Do you have uh, billboards that you're paying for? Do you have uh, flyers that are going out? Or do you have the ability for a fairly low cost to jump on social media and start marketing your real estate business? And I wouldn't limit it to just looking at what other the realtors are doing. Look at the companies yeah. that you follow on social media. Mm -hmm. How are they marketing themselves? How, what is stopping you from scrolling? Now, again, we don't want to get too in the weeds where it's what we like because we're not marketing to each other. We're trying to market more business. Mm -hmm. But it's paying attention. It's becoming the marketer of your real estate business business. And if you don't do that well, take a look what other people are doing, like Keith and Mike and Todd said, and you don't have to shot for shot copy it, but it can give you a lot of good ideas. And again, it's overwhelming. A lot of people are going to jump off this call, go, I'm not doing any of that stuff. Just start, just start just taking pictures, just start documenting more of what you're doing in your day-to-day -day life, posting it on Instagram and social media, and you'll see that it's a lot easier than I think people think it is. I, I equate social media to, to open houses. Yeah. There, there's two groups of agents out there. There are groups of there's a group of agent that says open houses don't work, <laughs> and they're a waste of time because I don't get any business from it. And there's the other group of agents like we got a couple on our team. They they killed it last year, um, and they got the majority of their business, which has turned into more business mm -hmm. by doing open houses. So the first group I say open houses aren't working for you because you're doing them wrong. Right. Yeah. Right. You're 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 not putting systems behind it and you're not you don't have a you know, when when if I'm going to do an open house Saturday, I've got a I got a I personally have a checklist of all the things that I'm going to do in order to get ready for that open house, which includes reaching out to the neighbors and, 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 and so forth. Those are the agents right. that succeed at open houses. Well, I feel like for social media, most agents uh, say, hey, I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to get business on social media because it's such a saturated market and um, and it's never worked for me and so forth. And I would say because they're probably not they're doing signed. it right because yeah. Yeah, right. there are agents that are killing it mm -hmm. and getting business. So with all of that said and done, right. for me, I think social media, I think that the first step is agents have to say, okay, this is going to be part of my business plan. Like, like I am going to, I have to schedule time every single day uh, that I am going to focus on uh, my social media presence right. and start building that strategy. So with that, how would you take a brand new agent and say, okay, take them from, okay, we're going to sign up on Facebook mm -hmm. right now. Um, and now we're going to start building that strategy and those systems. What I mean by systems, okay, you mentioned open houses. If I've, if I've got an open house, this weekend, what and when do I post on social media? Right. When I have a closing or when I have a new listing, what and when am I posting and how many posts r relate to that rather than just kind of, you know, whenever I think of it. Yeah, there's 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 a lot of formulas out there and everyone has their own style. You know, um, when it comes to uh, 
first, the, the mind frame around you using social media needs to be that you owe it to yourself. You've spent so much time and money to get a license, to become a real estate agent. But if you don't know how to market yourself, you're not in business because it's a fundamental. You have to be able to market yourself. There's no other way that anyone's going to know that you do what you do except for meeting and greeting people. And we don't do that fast enough. Social media marketing is going to allow you to grow your business. At, it's very scalable and at, at a much faster clip than you could do it in person. And so when it comes to getting going, uh, you, you're setting up your, your, your platforms Ask yourself, where do you want to be, right? Reverse engineer your audience. If I want to target millennials, then just be on Instagram for now until you get comfortable, until you get a cadence, until you, you understand a frequency and you get comfortable using the tool. Um, if Facebook is going to be uh, you, your, uh, the largest audience that is abandoning Facebook is your 29 and under. Um, much of your older millennials and obviously Gen X and uh, boomers are on Instagram or on Facebook and um, the 55 plus is the largest growing demographic on Facebook. And so um, they're empty nesters. They want to stay connected with the family and friends. And so they, you know, they may be downsizing. So it's a good chance for you to be on there and, and meet those folks with two platforms under your belt and, and getting to utilize those. The best thing that you can do is, is, is get an editorial calendar and start writing down on days of the week and times of the month that you want to post certain content. Um, once you've got that un established and what you realize what you want to do, then you can get into, okay, now let's start creating posts. The easiest thing that I tell agents that they can do when they create content is batch create your content. If I'm going to sit down and put myself in that mind frame, I'm not going to just write one post. I'm going to write four or five, I, you know, dedicate an hour to, you know, mm -hmm. shoot three videos and put them in the can. Like I know agents who even go to the point where they'll actually change out their shirt or their blouse or mm -hmm. their jacket to give the perception that it was all shot one day. Right. And then schedule them. You can schedule them for a week from now, two weeks from now, 30 days out, and then let those hit while you're doing other things as an agent. So your social media is active, up and running and going, and then you're just chiming back in and, and commenting, answering questions and so forth. One of the most underutilized things that you can do for an open house is utilize Facebook's event tab. You can create an event for your open house, just like if I were uh, a beer festival or you know um, a concert, they're all creating events in uh, Facebook. And then that event shows up, again, it's free, and it shows up in the calendar and it's targeted for people who live in the area of the event. That uh, someone who lives in Connecticut is not going to see your event for your open house. But who will see it is the people who live in the area because fa Facebook favors the local area and the geofenced right area yeah. based on where the event's happening. Uh, so uh, last two things. Um, you you pretty much do a class almost every Thursday, right? <laughs> every I Thursday, mean, 10 a.m. I mean, so if, if you are going to seriously, and what I love about social media, there's an element to do it where it costs you nothing. Yeah. It's free advertising. Mm -hmm. So um, so take advantage of Keith's classes. Become a pro. Um, you can find all of those uh, every Thursday. You can find them on your dashboard Go to the, or go to the West USA calendar. They're, they are there and get signed up. And my last tip, you, you touched on it. But especially if I'm posting something about uh, that's real estate related, mm -hmm. um, really use the direct messaging function. Yeah, um, there is so, so much of my dialogue with people are taking place in my direct messaging tab. Because I'll see something and I'll comment on their post or mm -hmm. whatever, but then I'm going to sidebar them mm -hmm. and try to take that conversation deeper and deeper and deeper. So, all right, Keith, great stuff. Um, Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah Keith, appreciate awesome. it. Always, always. And, Leave you with the quote of the day. I actually read this ahead of time. Hey. <laughs> All our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. From the uh, late, great Walt Disney. Appreciate everybody joining us today. Go out and sell a home. Oh.